Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, my name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And as always, you are in the right place if you want the information, the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies that you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. Dom, my producer, and I do this each week. We dive past the headlines. We look at the real data so you have the information you need. And we always answer all your questions, too. So we're going to throw the Anytime Hotline out there in a minute and you can call or text your questions in. But as I mentioned, it's our goal to kind of um, take the the dramatic headlines of the week and determine if the sky is really falling. And guys, there were a lot of headlines this week. So uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to talk about Putin and gas prices, and we're going to talk about the inflation rate. And are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Um, there was a ton of data, the big rate hike this week. Uh, so I got, I've already got a lot of questions that came in during the week. So I kind of get a sense of where we're going with this, but I want you to call in and text your questions also. Um, and we're going to jump in in a minute, but before we get started, I always like to give a special thanks to our featured sponsor in this week. It's Willow Title. You met Heather last week. She's a super cool lady. Um, runs an amazing title company, but also does a lot of great work for the community. So big shout out and a thank you to Willow Title Services. If you're an agent and you need somebody to facilitate your transactions or you're an investor or you're just selling on your own and you need some help, give them a shout. You can learn a lot more about them at willowtitleservices.com or give them a call at 561-737-1630. So a big shout out to Willow Title. So anyway, as I mentioned, a lot of headlines this week. I mean, it uh, it was really interesting. I mean, we had some big economic news. The, the economy contracted once again. So we've been talking about it since the beginning of the year. We've seen it coming. We felt it coming. And here it is. We've had the second quarter of GDP contraction. So by all historic definitions, that's a recession. Now, albeit a slight one, it was a very, very slight contraction. But what's that old saying? If you're not growing, you're dying. And that's kind of how the economy is judged. And it's not growing at the moment. We are um, we're in a recession. But interestingly enough, the uh, powers that be say we're not. They are going to change the definition of a recession. So I've always kind of thought if it, you know, walked like a duck and quacked like a duck, you probably should treat it like a duck. But here we go again. We're uh, we're changing definitions. I, I mean, We've changed so many of them over the course of the last couple years. I mean, and you, if you've listened to this show at all, you know, I don't take, uh, I don't bring politics into this, but we don't call Republicans Republicans anymore. We call them, you know, right wing wackos or rhinos and Democrats aren't Democrats anymore. They're left wing lunatics or socialists. I mean, we've just, we've changed the definition of everything. We don't even really know how to define a man and woman anymore. It's kind of, it's kind of frightening in the whole pronoun thing. I'm all about do what makes you happy, but I just honestly don't understand all that. But now I don't know how to define a recession anymore because we're changing that definition too. But uh, I guess when Bruce Jenner was named woman of the year, we probably should have known things were going to get weird moving forward. But um, anyway, two consecutive months of negative GDP is a recession by definition. And I think it's it's up to us to manage our own financial house through it. I mean, what would happen if Steve Weagle and, um, you know, Mr. Lyons and the surfing weatherman started to de- change the definition of a hurricane? You know, what would that do to us? You probably would be unprepared and likely at risk. So they don't do that. They give us the information that we need so we can go out there and make the be- best decisions. And we don't know if it's going to hit us, if it's going to hit us hard, but we know it's here and it's coming. So we batten down the hatches, we stock up, we get our family safe, and 99.999% of the time, 99.99% of us make it through it just fine, but it's because we were given the true data. So I kind of feel like that's the case here, too. I feel like there's plenty of good news in all of this. We're going to navigate through it okay, but we just need to know what it is. So I'm here to say that, in my mind, it's a recession. We're seeing housing demand pull back a little bit. I think that's a product of pricing. A uh, little bit to do with the rates also. 
uh, cost of money. It's more expensive to borrow money now, so your payments are higher. But I do think the majority of that um, hesitation is on all of this fear mongering about the future. And there's a lot of people, I talk to them every day, who say, we're just going to wait for the market to crash. We're going to buy at a discount. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Now, I may be wrong, and I do believe some areas are going to see some, you know, some pulling back in values because I think there are some areas that are just overvalued, and we've talked about them in the past. They kind of got pulled along this appreciation cycle, um, and you're going to see some of that. But I think overall, this is not 2008, and I say that because there's just not a lot of supply coming to the market. Even though demand is cooling, um, there's just not the supply there to push us into a downward spiral with uh, values. I mean, builders aren't pulling permits. They're slowing down. Builder sentiment is at uh, a recent low and you know quite a historic slump in sentiment moving forward. So for all of those reasons, I just feel like there's not enough product. And I hate to use that word housing, calling it a product, because it starts to sound like a commodity. And to me, it's much more than that. But that's the reality. There's not enough supply coming to the market to push values down. And you hear it all the time, appreciation slowing, activity slowing, um, inventory increasing. And all of that is true, but appreciation is slowing from, you know, all-time high rates. So if you were appreciating 20%, 30%, 40% year over year, and now you're appreciating 8%, 10%, 6%, I don't know what the number is where we're going to settle in. It's still appreciation. Um, The numbers are still going up. And if you're waiting this out, I don't know that you're saving yourself anything. Um, I may be wrong. The world may be coming to an end. I just don't see it. You know, I've been in the business in one form or another since 1999. Actually, longer than that, I was born into a family of home builders, but I didn't really start paying attention to the business until 1999 when I first got involved. Um, And this is very different. It feels the same. We've talked about that, but it's very different. So, you know, anyway, let me focus on the news of the week. So we saw the 75 basis point hike in uh, interest rates, right? The Federal Reserve uh, increased the overnight rate to try to, you know, quell uh, inflation. And interestingly enough, it didn't have a direct effect on mortgage rates. As a matter of fact, mortgage rates pulled back a little tiny bit this week. And, you know, don't go run out there and expect a 3% rate. It didn't fall, but it pulled back a little bit in the face of this big hike. And you've heard me say it for a long time. The two aren't directly connected in This week really evidenced that. And part of it is because it was baked in. He kind of pre-announced last meeting that he was going to do this again. Um, And there's not another meeting until September, not another Federal Reserve meeting. So they're not going to hike in August. So everybody's kind of feeling like, okay, we were ready for this. We've absorbed it. And at the moment, rates aren't reacting to it. Now, what that does mean for you, though, is your credit card, card payments are going up. Your home equity line payments are going up. Most likely everything we buy is going up because most businesses and a lot of manufacturers operate on lines of credit and that's adjustable rate debt. So when that overnight rate goes up, prime rate goes up, those associated interest rates also go up. I'm working with a gentleman now. He's got amazing credit, a ton of money in the bank, a big piece of equity. He doesn't want to take the money out of the bank to pay off the credit cards, but he wants to refi to pay the credit cards off and a truck. Um but his interest rates on his credit card are 24 and change. I just was blown away by that. You know, most of us don't know what our credit card interest rate is. We don't know what our um, our car uh, loan interest rate is. We don't know what our boat interest rate is. Uh, but a lot of times, <laughs> it's a heck of a lot more than you expected. And uh, in this case, it's going to make a lot of sense for him to refi and pay it off. So that was the big news this week. We had the... Um, the uh, economic news of the uh, GDP pullback, uh, just under a percent, so negative growth. And there was another economic indicator that uh, doesn't get talked about enough. It was the uh, personal consumption index rose uh, almost 7% year over year. And that's the biggest jump since 1982. And that's the stuff we use every day. That's the gas we put in our car, the food we put in our stomach, the medicine, the clothes. That's personal. That's the stuff you can't cut back on. Um, with the exception of maybe gas, a few less trips to Home Depot in my <laughs> in my case. But 
another indication that we're in this, we're in inflation, and the recession is here. So we're going to give you the information you need to at least keep your real estate house in order moving forward. But you hear the music, that means we're rolling into a break. On the other side of this break, we're going to dive into your questions. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience. So trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard the announcer. If you have questions, get a, get them over to us at 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. That's the Anytime Hotline. And Dom is manning that hotline right now here in the studio but during the week, that pushes to my office, so you can use that number just about any time. That's why we call it the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569. And I had a text during the break that said, hey, I, I think I got the weatherman's name wrong. It's uh, Steve Weagle. James Whelan is the surfing weatherman. So, James, if I got your name wrong, I apologize, brother. And then Mike Lyons were the three that I threw out there. But uh, anyway, thank you for correcting me. If I got your name wrong, James, I do apologize. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like we need the real scoop. You know, we don't need to scare ourselves, and we just— I'm just not a fan of that tactic. So um, it was interesting this week. I talked to several clients who were super nervous ahead of the, um, the interest rate bump. And they wanted to do lock and chops. And we talk about that all the time. You know, you can lock a rate moving forward before you even identified a property. And sometimes there's a fee associated with it. Sometimes there's not, depending on the length of the um, the lock. And we liken that to, um, what do you, I always forget the name of that, a layaway. When you are going to buy something, but you're not going to pay it off until later at the store. So that's how the, they justify charging a fee for that. Because they're, they're basically selling you that money at today's rate, but they're not delivering it to you for, you know, 90 days, 120 days. So anyway, we had that conversation and there was no indication that we were going to get that bump. So there wasn't really an advantage to paying that fee and locking that rate out because they're still in that shopping stage, actively shopping. They're still making offers on properties um, almost every weekend. So you know, they were nervous, but they made it through it. And as rates kind of eased a little bit, they were excited that, you know, they didn't, it didn't cost them anything to wait that rate hike out. So I was truly um, blessed that they trusted me and they, you know, we had the discussion and they just, they rolled with it and it worked out. So, um, you know, get somebody on your team that you trust because these are the moments where it really makes a difference. And there were a lot of people and it, I get it. It's confusing. You hear a, a 75 or 75 basis point hike, 
and you think all of a sudden, you know, everything is three quarters of a point more and, you know, rates were almost six and a half percent. Now they're over seven. Well, guys, they're in the fives um, because those two things aren't correlated. So dig a little deeper, have the conversation so you have the information that you need. So uh, I was able to answer that question during the week and, you know, they're better off for it. So I was super happy about that. But speaking of questions, I know Dom is giving me the finger. Well, not giving me the finger. He's holding his finger up, letting me know we have questions. So let me throw it to him. Sheila is asking, I'm thinking of selling my rental property and my friend told me about a 31 exchange. Can you explain this? Hey, Sheila, um, that is a great question. It reminds me of that old 80s song since we were talking about uh, in the inflationary indicator hasn't been higher since 1982. But what was that song? Oh, oh Sheila. <laughs> Sorry, you guys know I can't sing, but I couldn't resist. Um, your friend is talking most likely about a 1031 exchange. And a 1031 exchange is quite is quite beneficial. And what it allows you to do is sell an investment property, typically um, an investment property. And if you have capital gains on that property, you can escrow the proceeds and identify a new property. And actually, I think... I think you can you can buy three new properties. Um, you know what? I'll do some research and post that to the Facebook pr- uh, group, uh, the Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. I'll post that to the page. But anyway, to answer your question, you sell the property and you move your equity into an escrow account that is facilitated by an authorized intermediary. And I can get you in touch with several. I've got a list of a nationwide list of 1031 exchange providers because they have to be approved. They hold that money on your behalf. You go out there and identify a new property and there's a time limit. You've got to find the new property within a certain amount of time and then buy it within a certain amount of time. But what, what it allows you to do is move that equity into another property without ever realizing the capital gains. Therefore you're not paying taxes on it. So it's super beneficial if you're cashing equity out and moving it into a property where there's more growth potential or more income potential. Um, We use the DSCR loan in some of those instances where you're moving it into another uh, rental property and you're using just the income from the rental property to qualify for the loan. I think that's a neat strategy. And again, I know there's a couple rules associated with the number of properties that you can buy through a 1031 exchange. And I think it's, I think it's three properties, and then there's a 200% rule, which if it's going to be more than three properties, it can't be more than 200% of, I believe it's the value of the property that you sold. But again, I'm not an authorized intermediary. It's usually an attorney, sometimes a title company, but it's some an escrow agent. Um, they would be better suited to ask how you move out of that and meet all of the, of the requirements. But what a 1031 exchange is, it's a vehicle that allows you to defer capital gains until you sell the new property. And I know where you're going. I can already see you getting ready to ask another question. Yes, I, I'm almost positive you can 1031 from a new from the new property into another property at a later date. But again, um, a question better suited to the facilitator of the exchange. And I'm happy to get you in touch with them. If you have a question regarding that, give us a shout during the week, 561-291-8569. But let's keep the questions rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Dom. Justin sent this one. What are the rates for a refinance? I'm thinking about a cash out to put some money away. Hey, Justin, you're not the only one, brother. I'm talking to more and more people. Um, here's the thing, right? Because the rates aren't as bad as everybody thinks. Um, these last two rate hikes, as we talked about, didn't directly impact mortgage rates. So we're seeing, you know, rate quotes in the fives pretty regularly. And you can always buy a rate down if you, you know, had to have a lower rate. You know, I'm just using very general terms because loan product or fees associated or credit score are going to dictate a lot of this. But we're seeing rates in the fives right now. Um, so if you're the guy that I referenced earlier and you know, this is a gentleman, so this deal works for him, he's going to refi his house and he's got a rate in the fours. Um, but he's going to pay off those 24% credit cards and that crazy truck, uh, payment that he's got, because like a lot of people, he went out there and bought at the peak of the peak of the peak 
and paid $85,000 for a used diesel truck and financed it 100% sign and drive. And now he's carrying around, you know, what should be a mortgage payment in the form of a truck payment. So he's going to roll all that together and save a big, big chunk of money each month. And his attitude is, you know, he's going to weather the storm, kind of that storm analogy we used in the opening. He thinks the recession is coming and he's preparing himself. So unlike my man, Dom, he went out there and got himself into a lot of credit card debt and into that big truck payment. And the house is an option for him to cash out some equity and get his financial house in order. So, um, yeah, you should see rates in the fives, but if you have more questions about that, just give us a shout during the week. So, uh, let's see if we have another one. Anna sent the text. I'd like to buy a commercial building for my business, but I don't know where to start. Can you give me some advice? That was Anna. Hey, Anna. Um, that's a great question. So that actually could be a whole show on its own and probably should be at some point. Maybe we'll do that because, uh, I've, I've been involved in transactions like that in the past where, someone actually bought an entire building and renovated it for their, uh, for their business. And and we've done it too, where they've bought the building and then rented out uh, 49% of the building and kept 51% interest for themselves. Uh, And the reason that was important was they utilized an SBA loan. So there's a couple of different SBA loans that are pretty predominant in purchasing real estate. And oftentimes you're looking at, you know, around a 10% down payment, usually around a 20% term, Um, One of the loan products is an adjustable rate. One is a fixed rate. And you can even finance your equipment and your renovations of your facility. Uh, And if there's a renovation period, they'll allow you to, you know, not have to make payments because they set an uh, interest reserve up in those uh, cases so that you're not even servicing the debt while while the building is getting ready for your business. But I would point you in the direction of looking for an SBA loan product to get started. If you have questions about that, I'd love, love, love to talk to you more about it. Um, But give us a shout during the week. 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline. And that rings at my office during the week. But you hear the music. We're going to jump into a quick break. And on the other side of this break, we're going to get to more of your questions. Buying your home is likely the biggest transaction you'll ever make. With stakes that high, you need certainty. Willow Title Services strives to take the stress away by providing a single point of contact with clear communication, resulting in a painless and positive experience. Willow Title Services has over 50 years in industry leading and closing techniques, rooting them in the experience needed to get you to close. Call Willow Title Services at 561-737-1630 or online at willowtitleservices.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. 
All right, we're back. My name is Mark Itell, and you're listening to The Mr. Mortgage Show. And I got a giant smile on my face because I got my first piece of hate mail or hate email. (laughs) Or actually, maybe I get hate email all the time, but Dom just filters it out so I don't see it because I have fragile feelings. (laughs) Actually, if you know me, you'll laugh about my fragile feelings. But anyway... Um, I wasn't trying to strike a political blow on one side or the other in that opening uh, monologue, if you will. I was pointing out the irony in changing the definition of something uh, in hopes of changing the outcome. I really don't have uh, a a passionate stance on, on either side of what I shared, other than the fact that not calling it a recession or not calling it inflation or blaming gas prices on something else doesn't change the fact that we have to deal with it. And I'm my my goal each week is to give you the data that helps you deal with it. You can call it whatever you want. You can you can take that quacking duck and call it a goose, but it's still going to poop on your boat dock and it's still going to quack all over your backyard. You can call it what you want, but treat it what it is. So anyway, that was the spirit of that. I apologize if I ruffled any feathers not to, uh, oh, wait a minute. That was a duck pun, ruffle feathers. But I just think, it, you know, that's probably another testimony of where we are in our society. I'm going to ask you a question, Dom. Have you ever, and or if not you, someone you know, have been on an online dating site? Yeah. Okay. So have you met that person for Starbucks or for dinner and they look nothing like they did on their profile? Yeah. Right? You probably walked right past them. They look like their mom, right? Who is this person? Right. It's true. Right. So, you know, we're, we're there swiping right, swiping left. And then we go out there in the real world and we have no idea who the heck that person is. And I think that's because instead of dealing with who we are, we're trying to change our reality with an Instagram filter or a TikTok filter. In the old days, we called it Photoshopping. You know, people's have, have a big bald spot and the, the people's photographer would put a big lump of hair on the picture and they look 20 years younger. Well, now technology allows us to even change the definition of ourselves, which is quite scary because in the real world, we are who we are. And I think, you know, that's, I don't know, I don't mean to go down that bunny trail and get all, you know, philosophical. It just kind of reminded me that uh, here's one more example of where we would prefer our perception Uh, to be the truth instead of actual reality. So thanks for playing along, Dom. I want to hear later after the show how that coffee shop date went. (laughs) If if you forgave her for having a mustache and a goatee and and sat with her anyway, Dom just fell out of his chair over there laughing. Anyway, um, let's keep this train rolling. That's all. I just, I I wanted to get, get that out there because guys, the, we're our own solution. You know, it's up to us to dissect the data so we can solve our own problems. And, you know, we, we don't control gas prices. We don't control interest rates. All we control is the, you know, four walls that we live inside and we can do the best we can for our friends and our family and our loved ones. And that's kind of the spirit of what we do here is give you that information. So speaking of information, I am going to stop rambling and throw it over to Dom. Bert is asking... The rate I'm being quoted seems high. I'm told it's because I'm buying a condo. Is this true? Hey, Bert, that could be true. So everyone remembers the Surfside condo collapse. And as a byproduct of that happening, the condo questionnaire process or process, depending on what side of the border you're from, that's from my friend Sean Savage, process, Depending on how that condo questionnaire is completed and the data submitted as a part of it is going to dictate whether that condo association is going to be considered warrantable or non-warrantable. And sadly, a lot of condos in South Florida in particular were mismanaged financially. Now, that's not to say they're, they're not fantastic communities with beautiful lake views and a place that you want to live. But what it does mean is the condo doesn't have enough in its budget to for the likely repairs to replace the roof. Or in the case of Surfside, that's likely due to um, rust intrusion and uh, deferred maintenance in that basement area. And I know we haven't gotten the reports officially issued yet, but you can go up and down the beach and see where there's a lot of rust on balconies. And sometimes a balcony will fall off. So there's a lot of maintenance in that one big common building and associations are often run by just everyday people. You know, you're a retired postman or retired accountant and your goal is to manage that association as fiscally responsible as possible, which often equates to 
the lowest dues possible, which then equates to not enough money in the budget for unforeseen expenses or a roof or AC. And in this environment we're in, all of this stuff costs more money. So a lot of condos aren't making it through the full condo questionnaire review, which is throwing them into that non-warrantable category and in some instances requiring a larger down payment. But because of that, they fall into a higher risk category in the lender's eyes, therefore a higher interest rate. Now, it has very little to do with you as a borrower in most cases. You could have the most amazing credit. You could have a ton of assets in the bank. You could be as perfect a borrower as possible. But in this instance, the building or the type of home that you're buying has an associated risk carry with it. So that's why you may be seeing a higher interest rate. I hope that helps. It's probably not what you want to hear. The answer I'm saying to you at this moment is it's likely that's the case, but I'd welcome the opportunity to have a conversation with you off the air because with a, you know, a little bit of information, I can quickly tell you if you're getting a good rate or not. And, um, no obligation, you know, if you're happy where you are and it's a good rate, stay. If it's something that we can improve, I'd be happy to do that too. But give us a shout during the week. I'll be um, more than happy to walk you through that. So let me throw it over to Dom for another question. Lucinda sent the text. Is a hard money loan the best option for flipping houses? Do you do hard money loans? Hey, Lucinda. So the second part of your question is, yes, we can help with hard money loans. And I guess I should probably explain what a hard money loan is because a lot of people probably have heard of it. Some of you may know what it is. Some may not. Um, A hard money loan is basically like a private lender. So we deal with some private managed funds, for lack of a better word. It's not like a Wall Street investment fund or a hedge fund, but it's a pool of private investors who have cash available to lend. And typically it's a shorter term loan. So they're usually one to two years, sometimes up to five, but one to two years is the term. And then they balloon. They're going to want to be paid off after the term. They're often interest only. They sometimes have a prepayment penalty, but not always. And because of that, there's usually some, and I'm air quoting points, but there's usually some fees on the front of the loan because you can pay it off anytime. So, uh, and as I mentioned, the interest rates are typically a little bit higher. Now, before we saw this big run up in interest rates, we were seeing hard money lenders in the high sevens and eights. And now we're starting to see them in the tens. Um, interest rate wise, but they work really well if you're flipping property because you can get in and out of them quickly. You're not being underwritten as a borrower to a set of, you know, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae or government guidelines. It's a much faster process. You're often going to have to present your exit strategy. So, you know, the presentation summary might be as simple as, you know, this house I'm purchasing it for 450,000. The renovation budget is 150000 Therefore, I'm going to be into it for six. But the after repair value, so you'll hear that term a lot with hard money, ARV, after repair value is 600000 So there's two hundred grand in upside or hundred grand in upside, I'm sorry, in that example. So the lender looks at that and says, okay, we'll lend you the money. It helps if you're experienced, if you can show a track record of doing this. But a hard money loan is a good option um, for Flippers. And we we use that DSCR loan as a takeout loan for a lot of our hard money lenders. So they'll loan you the private funds at the higher interest rate for up to two years, allow you to go in, renovate a property, get it rented out in this case, because we're talking about a DSCR loan as the takeout, and get it fully rented out. You're at cash flow and then take a DSCR loan, which could be a a variety of different products, 40 year term interest only, but it's an investor loan that allows you that long-term financing. So you get into the property with a hard money loan and then the DSCR loan that we call the landlord loan will allow you to have your long-term financing. So I hope that answers your question. In the case of flipping, you don't need the DSCR piece. You just need that after repair value and you need that strategy to get to that point. So Lucinda, I hope that helps. I'm excited for you going down this path. If you need some guidance, give us a shout during the week, but uh, we'll be right back after this break to answer more of your questions. 
New to South Florida and ready to sit down roots with a new home? Willow Title Services makes closing a smooth, painless, and positive experience. With individual service for each buyer's needs, Willow Title Services has a combined 50 years plus of experience with industry-leading closing techniques. Call Willow Title Services today at 561-737-1630. That's 561-737-1630. Online at willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you indeed are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you can get your questions to us at 561-291-8569. 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline. And before we keep your questions coming, I just wanted to throw this out because I learned this yesterday uh, from a, a realtor friend of mine named Melanie. And, you know, we're talking about changing the the meanings of things and what terms we're allowed to use and what we're not and everybody's feelings. And I know the realtors are having a challenging time right now. You can't use master bedroom anymore. It's now called primary bedroom. And I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm all for making everything better. But one of the challenges is they, they no longer can talk about good school district, bad school district, or even the crime of the neighborhood because it's considered uh, borderline discriminatory and maybe even redlining. So here's a website to check out. It's called niche.com or niche, depending on, uh, again, you know, what side of the border you're from. But N-I-C-H-E dot com, niche dot com is a great website and it ranks all of the school districts and school boards and school zones. And you just punch in the, the address and um, if you're looking for private schools or public schools and it gives you the ratings for the school district. So niche.com is turning out to be a pretty valuable t- tool as a buyer if you're out there hunting properties and you can't get the answers that you're used to getting from your agent because they're no longer allowed to share that. So anyway, on to questions. What do we have, Dom? Gary sent an email. Is the 1031 exchange you were talking about the only way to avoid capital gains? We want to downsize, but we don't think we will reinvest all the proceeds. Hey, that's a great question. Um, so it sounds like, and I'm going to ask you to call me or shoot me an email to give me some clarification, but it sounds like you're talking about your primary residence. You're saying you want to downsize. Um, if you've owned the property in Florida as your primary and lived in it as your primary for, I believe it's three of the last five years, and you said we, so I'm assuming married, um, but again, assumptions, a married couple can realize up to a half a million dollars in capital gains in the state of Florida tax-free. So it may not even be an issue for you. You may be able to sell the property and take all of the proceeds and buy whatever you want with them gains-free if you've been uh, primary residence for, I believe it's three of the last five years and um, a married couple, a single individual 
uh, primary residence is 250000 So I hope that helps. If, there, if you need some clarity, give me a call because I don't completely understand. But if it's a primary um, and you've been there for a while, there's a good chance you won't pay gains anyway. So, But call me during the week if you have uh, more questions on that. So let me throw it back over to Dom. Heidi is asking, what are the cons to selling our house to someone with an FHA loan? We're not using a realtor. Hey, Heidi. Honestly, um, you've heard, if you've listened to the show for any length of a a time or you follow us on social media, you know my opinion on FHA, VA, USDA, all of these quote unquote government loans. Um, There's no downside to you. I think in the recent past, they got a bum rap because of misunderstanding the loan product. And most of it was around the appraisal. So if the property is safe, right, if you live in the home um, and there's not a big hole in the roof or staircases missing handrails or exposed wiring or chipping paint, there's a likelihood that you're not going to have any repair call outs on the appraisal. But again, maybe you do. Maybe the, maybe the place needs a lot of work. I don't know. But the appraisal is often where people get wrapped around the axle with an FHA loan and think it's a bad thing um, because with an FHA loan, if the appraisal is under the sales price, the next FHA offer on that property, the appraiser, if they do a second appraisal, is going to see that first appraisal. So the fear in the past, as we were appreciating so quickly, is um, you know the property is not going to appraise and then that, that FHA appraisal is going to screw me up. Well, that's only if there's another FHA buyer, and then it's only for, I believe it's only for 90 days. So it's not a big deal um, if the property value is going to be supported by the appraisal. And the reality is, if it doesn't appraise FHA, it's probably not going to appraise conventional or or VA either. But um, that's the misconception around an FHA loan. It's an awesome loan product. It gives a lot of people the opportunity to buy the first time because there's a little bit larger debt to income ratio allowed and there's some lower credit score requirements and a smaller down payment in a lot of instances and it carries a better interest rate. So it's a great loan product. And if you're a seller, I think you should explore all options to sell and open yourself up to as many of the buyer pool out there as possible. And um, anyway, I, I, I hope that helps. I think that was the misconception around it. I'm a firm believer in it as an awesome loan pro- product. We're proud to do them. We've been doing them since I've gotten in the business and, you know, done right. They close quickly and they're, they're a non-issue. So hope, hopefully that helps, but uh, let's keep it rolling. What do we have, Dom? Dan sent this text, big rate hikes, housing demand slowing, inflation, recession, and Ukraine. Tell me again why a crash is not coming. Wow. Dan the Downer. (laughs) My man. Wow. Um, Listen, I don't mean to discount that. I really don't. I just, I'm having fun with you, brother. Um, I get it. There's a lot of fear mongering out there, right? I'm just not participating in it. I'm looking at the data. Um, Big rate hikes. I'm going to try to take this one at a time. So big rate hikes, I think was first. Um, We talked about that. It didn't affect mortgage rates. So that's a big, big misconception. What was number two, Dom? Big rate hikes was one. Number two was housing demand slowing. Housing demand slowing is actually a good thing if you're a buyer because suddenly now you have more choice and more ability to negotiate. Um, Don't mistake demand slowing for prices depreciating yet, but appreciation is slowing, but appreciation is still going up. So... Um, that was number two. What was number three? Number three was inflation. Inflation. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, let's let's say inflation and recession together because that's really where we are. And if you look historically, housing has always performed well during a recession with the exception of the 2008 recession, which housing caused. So it kind of led us into the recession. So logic dictates that it was going to do poorly anyway. Um, but inflation, housing is often a hedge against that. And think about your own world right now. You're paying a ton more for gas, a ton more for groceries, a ton more for rent. If you would have bought a house a year ago, you'd have equity and you'd have a fixed payment. So housing is a hedge against inflation. And what was the last one? War in Ukraine? Yeah. So war in Ukraine is horrible, right? Anything, anytime there's a war like that. But If you're talking about the war in Ukraine affecting gas prices, um, no, it's not. 
And it, it never has. That was just an excuse that we use to justify why prices high. Supply and demand was what caused prices to go up. And the administration made it very clear to oil companies for the last three and a half years that they wanted an electric vehicle society and they were going to put oil companies out of business. And then when we needed more supply, they were upset with the oil companies for not drilling wells when it, from what I read, and again, I mean, I'm not an oil man and I have no skin in this game, but it takes like seven years, eight years for that first barrel of oil to ever come out of the ground on a virgin lease. So I don't think that the war in Ukraine is negatively impacting our economy. It's negative, negatively impacting global humanity and war and death on any scale is unacceptable and sad. But none of that is big housing crash. And I think that's where you were going with that. So um, I would love to sit with you for a cup of coffee or a, a, a chat on the phone and dissect that in in uh, in in deep fashion, if you like, um, during the week. And I would, you know, maybe I can learn something, but I'm just not participating in the fear. I'm a data head. I look at the numbers and right now there's just not supply coming to the market until there is um, demand is going to continue to outpace supply. So hang in there, brother. If there's any, if you need to talk, you need a shoulder to cry on, give me a shout. I don't think there's a crash. I think we're in for a pulling back of appreciation. We're already seeing it. Some areas we're going to see a slight price decline, but I don't think any of that dictates a crash. So hang in there, exhale, get in the um, yoga position, light some incense. Here, let's do it together. Um, It's going to be okay, brother. You're going to get through it. And we're going to get through this short break and get to more of your questions on the other side. Hang in there. Thanks. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience. So trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I just peeked out the window of the studio, and I think Downer Dan is out there waiting for me. There's a big pickup truck next to my car and a real angry-looking dude. So (laughs) if I don't make it home after the show, Mrs. Mortgage... I offered to buy Downer Dan a cup of coffee and we're going to hash out world politics. So anyway, let's keep it rolling and see if we can squeeze in some more questions. What do we have, Dom? Tony's question is, my wife and I are both on our current mortgage. I want to refinance a payoff debt. Do we both have to be on the new mortgage? Hey, that's a great question. So um, not necessarily. And it happens a lot, right? One person will have you know better credit. One person might have better credit and better income. 
Um, but that's where the deciding factor is going to be. So if you or she has the credit and the income to support the debt, the other person can be left off. And then you still will both own the property. You can both be on the deed and just have one person underwritten for the credit side of the mortgage. And then, yeah, to answer your question, you don't both have to be on there, but it requires a little more question and answering. So if you want to give me a shout during the week, I'll be happy to answer that. But you can both own the property with only one uh, person on the mortgage. So I hope that helps. And hey, before I forget about it, I just want to throw this out there. If any of this makes sense to you or resonates or starts a conversation that you'd like to continue, um, you can find us all over the place when we're not on the air. So if you go to Facebook, I don't know if you use Facebook. I know I like Facebook. I'm really having a lot of fun with the... um, with the Mr. Mortgage Show page, we're putting a lot of lot of good data up there every day. Go to Facebook and search for the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you'll see all of the articles and the data sets that we use each week for the show. We post them there every day. So, and you can message us there. We can start a conversation if if you need us. But go to Facebook, search the Mr. Mortgage Show, and then um, you can Google us or, or find us online at www.mr.mortgage. Never a dot com. Just type in Mr. Hit the little dot, and then type in mortgage and hit enter. And our corporate website will pop up. And then each week after the show, Dom um, uploads it as a podcast to the iHeart app, to Spotify, to Spreaker, to all of the players. Um, obviously part of the iHeart family, so you can find us there. But uh, Or they're all he- held in a library at mrmortgageradio.com. Just type in mrmortgageradio.com, and all of them will be there also. And I think that's it. I don't know if we have any more social media or um, web platforms to uh, to inform you about. But yeah, if you need us during the week or you just want to continue the conversation or you want to share this information with somebody, those are three great places to get started. And uh, we're having a lot of fun answering your questions each week. But yeah, I appreciate you. If you enjoy this, please share it. We're always, always, always trying to grow the listenership. It's our goal to answer as many questions as possible. Um, Share the page, share the show, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, help anybody we can. So let's keep it rolling with questions, see if we can squeeze in another one. Tom left a message. My credit karma score is 641. Are there any good mortgage programs for that credit score? Hey, that's a great question. Um, So before we get into that, credit karma, which is an awesome service. If you're not using it, folks, check it out. Credit karma, K-A-R-M-A. Um, It's free, and you can monitor your credit. It'll show you your available balances, your open credit lines, any derogatory credit, and then your score. Here's the challenge. That's a consumer credit score, not a mortgage score. And what that means to you is it's usually a higher score than we're going to see on the mortgage side. The good news is with a 641, there's a very good chance that your mortgage score is going to be higher than 620, And that 620 platform, or that 620 benchmark, rather, opens you up to a broad availability of financing. There is financing available under a 620, but that 620 is kind of the magic number. So I hope that helps. Um, Hey, you hear that music? You know what that means? We're winding down another week here at the Mr. Mortgage Show. Dom and I really enjoy doing this with you each week. Same bat time, same bat station. Uh, Join us next week. We'll keep this uh, mortgage party rolling. Um, But in the meantime, share the show. Find us online, like I mentioned, Facebook, The Mr. Mortgage Show, or MrMortgageRadio.com, or www.mr.mortgagenever.com. So everybody have a fantastic week. Uh, We appreciate your time. And as always, if you you need us during the week, give us a shout, 561-291-8569. Thanks. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.